What's up visuals fam and welcome back to the channel for another budget build video. In this one we're going to be taking a look at another system from good old Dell. Wait, I know what you're thinking. Oh Ricky, another Optiplex build, right? No, no, not one of those again, get out of here. Today we're actually going to be checking out a system that's kind of old by today's standard, but I still think we may be able to squeeze a little gaming power out of it. So let's go ahead and roll our intro and we'll get right into it. Let's go. URCD key has discounted codes for games and software that are a fraction of what you would pay if you purchased them from a retail store. More specifically, they have great prices on their Microsoft Office 2016 bundle that comes with a Windows 10 license as well. If that's not enough, you can also use my promo code RAV20 to receive 20% off the already discounted price. Just type in your product you're looking for, add it to the cart, view your cart, head to the checkout, type in my promo code, once again, RAV20, and see the sweet savings appear. Check the links in the video description to learn more. All right, so the system we're working on today is a Dell Precision T1600 workstation from our good old friend, Tom. Yep, that's Tom. Now, he has had this old system laying around in his office for quite a while, and he asked me if I could see if it still somehow could be viable for gaming in 2020. So naturally, I figured, perfect, another video for the channel, and we get to help out a friend. Win-win in my situation. So upon first inspection, I noticed that this particular model of the T1600 actually has a Xeon E3 1225 processor. This is from the Intel Sandy Bridge platform released back in 2011, and this processor is sporting four cores and four threads with a 95 watt TDP. So after figuring this out, I started to have a bit of hope for this project, to be honest. And uh, now I know there's no hyper threading, but that's okay because we're pretty much just merely looking at gaming numbers for our test today. Aside from this, everything else was pretty much as basic as it gets, with only four gigabytes of DDR3 RAM clocked at 1066 megahertz, a uh, 265 watt PSU, only 256 gigabytes of hard drive storage on a spinning hard drive. Oh man, everything's gonna be so slow. Ugh. And lastly, a Zotac GT610. And uh, to be honest, I didn't even bother to benchmark it because uh, I already know what to expect from a stock GPU like this, and we know what to do with these. Now, what will I be putting into this system to spruce it up a bit in hopes of taking it into budget gaming PC territory? First, the system needed a quite a bit of help in the cleaning department since it has been sitting under a desk for God knows how long. So uh, I made sure that was taken care of. Second, it needed some help in the overall system memory department. So I doubled it by adding another four gigs, giving us a total of eight gigs of DDR3 1600 megahertz RAM. Now it should be noted that this system can only run at a max of 1333 megahertz for RAM speed. So we'll just pretty much underclock these sticks to that frequency automatically. And finally, of course, you all knew we were going to slap a gaming GPU in here, so I grabbed my GTX 1650 Super and put it in this system to see if we could get some performance out of it since it would be able to run on the stock 265 watt power supply in this workstation. So with all of our upgrades and the system ready to go, all there is left to do is fire up some benchmarks and see how it does.
All right, well, that was actually pretty surprising. I did not expect this system from 2011 to perform actually as well as it did, and I say well with an, you know, an asterisk up there because in a couple of games it actually performed just as I thought it would. Um, but of course, in the more AAA, you know, huge game title tests, we can clearly see a huge CPU bottleneck that is happening, and this tells me that we could probably improve our performance in these games with a CPU upgrade. Now, I searched around for these systems, and it seems like we could upgrade our CPU all the way up to an E3 1290 at uh, 3.6 gigahertz, turboing up to 4.0 gigahertz. Um, these are still pretty dang expensive, though, unfortunately, coming in at about 160 to 180 dollars on eBay. But if you really want to go this route for a budget build, I I'd suggest finding a good deal on a T1600 with an i7-2600 in it or even a Xeon E3-1245 as these both have a 4-core, 8-thread processor on the same socket that also have a higher boost frequency which usually equates to better gaming performance. You can usually find these systems readily available on eBay and all you have to do after grabbing one is throw in an SSD for overall system snappiness and I highly, highly suggest you do that. And then choose a nice GPU like a 1650 or a 1650 Super. Also, don't forget your SATA to PCIe connectors. I'll have those linked below if you guys need to use those. And basically after that, you have yourself a nice little budget rig for around $350. Score. Okay, so what have we learned here? We've learned that once again, it doesn't take like $600 to $800 to play games at 1080p with decent frame rates nowadays. And with the ever fluctuating prices of PC parts right now, these bargain basement builds are starting to become more and more relevant for people who wanna get their feet in the door to PC gaming. So what did you guys think of this idea? Would you build one of these yourself? Tell me what you would build in the comments below and let me know the specs you guys wanna go with. Also, while you're down there, if you found this video helpful, please drop the video a like so I know you guys are digging this kind of content and you guys may want to see more. And now, here's something new to the channel that I'm going to try to do regularly, and it's going to be called Family Time. So this is where I'll grab one random question from the comments, just random comment that I see on the channel, and uh, I will answer it for you guys. So here we go. So the first ever family time question comes from It's Wilson Boy, funny name. Uh, anyways, they ask, what i7 could I fit on this MOBO for cheap? So I think they're referring to the Dell Optiplex motherboard uh, that we have frequently been using and uh, upgrading in a lot of our videos. So with that particular board you guys have already seen, uh, I've been upgrading that and I upgraded the i7 to an i7-4770. And uh, like I said, we've been using that for a couple of videos on the channel now. But uh, now if he was referring to the older Optiplex that I had in the video um, with the i5-2500, the route to go with that would be an i7-2600, uh, which can be had on eBay for about 70 to 75 bucks shipped right now. So there you go. Hopefully that answered your question, man. And uh, hopefully you are able to go the route you wanted to with your Optiplex. But anyway, that's going to be it for me today, everyone. And as always, if you liked what you saw and you want to see more, please get subscribed with those notifications on so you always know when a new video or stream will be going live. And uh, just so you guys know, I usually stream every Wednesday uh, at 6.30, uh, except for today because I'm recording this video. Whoops. But I stream over on Twitch as well as YouTube, so be sure to go over there and follow me there as well. Anyway, have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.